Okay, any views expressed are the opinion of the guest. It's not a representation because the programming reflects that bold politicking with four eyes. It's really no competition. Suffocating with the dope, you know I be twisting. Real ninjas out in the field, now we cotton picking. Not to mention our intention to cover topics and many other subjects. I got more lines than the daily at the public with King Pharaoh, pole politicking. I'm pistol whipping, rappers jeopardizing hip hop position. My opposition, intuition, prediction Like writers on The Simpsons To witness the glimpses from higher up dimensions My bitches be fighting gremlins like Phoebe Cates Let me cook stovetop oven, easy bakes Hydroponic with them seaweed flakes Yeah, these rappers started from the bottom Power bottom, T.D. Jakes Unfollowed, talking about have you ever been swallowed Regardless of race, color, or creed You get Apollo, we pole Politicking, ticking, we straight pole Politicking, ticking, when it's a great show, you got to listen, listen to that poll. Politicking, ticking, this for the poll. Politicking, ticking, we straight poll. Politicking, ticking, when it's a great show, you got to listen, listen to that poll. Politicking, ticking. Hey y'all, hey. welcome back to PolPolTicket.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Twitch, Apple Music, wherever you listen to podcasts, 1212 and place to be with the most. How you doing, bro? What's up, man? Hey, now, that, I like homeboy we busting on, on your intro and shit. Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> yeah, I, I was telling him, I said, I said the, the more the more shit go on, that shit be real and real now, because he right. hit me on all this shit. Yeah, that's the homie. Uh, four eyes. He actually is yeah, Luda's, four eyes. Um, he, he dope. I, yeah, I've been following him and shit. He looked just like Snoop Dogg and shit. Like, he like he looked, we Dogg. we we was making fun of him because we was like he looked like everybody. He was like Snoop Dogg. I thought he yeah. was legendary Cat baller. <laughs> yeah, Cat <laughs> Williams. All of we was making fun of him. Yeah, he got he got a little bit of everything in him. What's up though, man? Chill, man. I, I was um. I met you at the uh, um, farmer's market. Right. Oh, well, hey, yeah, I met you. Cup. I talked to you. Yeah. Farmers oh, cup. Well, cup. No, I'm saying farmer's market because you remember uh, Yuck Mouth. <laughs> he was like, farmer's market. And he was like, well, it is a farmer's market in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did say farmer's market. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. farmer's yeah. cup, though. I met you farmer's there. You, you, Shout out you to was the farmer's doing, cup. Yeah, you was doing your thing. I like, yeah. I, um, like, I like how you was going down. Russell Palmer, look, look, what's up, man? Yo, thanks for coming to visit us in San Diego. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, Russell. That, oh, that's Russell on fire, yeah. That's yeah, I was trying to um, I was trying to get some of that weed you had out there, but like I said, I live in, um, so you was, we was in San Diego County. I live you, in Oceanside. I live you, in North you, County. You was with that old dude, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 because I remember at the end, at the end of the night, he was like, hey, man. Hide some of this shit in Oceanside. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that was cool, man. I hope I hope everybody got it. Look like some some gas. Oh shit is fire. The shit is fire. In case y'all don't know what he's talking about, you know what I'm saying? I'm uh glad to be a part of this company with this company called We Woods. And um, We Woods got the diss that shit. It's my signature uh pre-roll, got my name on the uh, on the glass too, and it's it's called Dis D I S D A T. Shit. So if you're in the LA area, you could you could uh search for Wee Woods delivery online and you can get that actually delivered to you in LA, anywhere in the LA area and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, then I remember what stood out to me the most. I remember after you perform, I remember you started you were saying you in you um in the Dominican Republic. I was like, wow, he's in the Dominican Republic, so how he out here. So I thought that was um cool. So how long you been in the Dominican Republic? Uh, almost four years now. That's 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 why I'm explaining why I'm on here without no shirt on right now. I ain't trying to show my. Right, let's go. Let's and, go. Let's know, go. I, I am a walking Black History Month every you know every day. What's up? What's up, Miss uh, Craw Crawley? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I see everybody tapping in. And I, I sent a little shout out to somebody. They they tapping in. Um, but uh uh, man, it's hot as hell out here right now. The power sometimes the uh power be going out and shit you know i got batteries on the back on, on my house so i always got backup batteries but they not hooked up to the air condition so my fans are work but the air condition ain't working that air condition ain't working but it's hot as fuck out here it's a humid heat you know what i'm saying it's like a sticky hot heat 
type shit. Out what, what made you move out there? Uh, crime, bullshit, and uh, my beautiful little sons. Because I didn't want, I don't, I don't want to raise them up, up in that bullshit, man. You know what I'm saying? So I, where was you I, at? I um, I was last living in, in Seattle, but I, I I lived in LA most all my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was and, telling, uh, I was telling my homie, cause my homie lived in Tacoma, and then I met, this, I met this, this girl saying she was saying she from Tacoma, and I was like, yeah. I said my homie called that shit. He said they call that shit to Compton. And he, she was like, no, they don't. And yeah, I was like, no, yeah. No. He said it's bad. Yeah. Tacoma, Tacoma, raggedy as fuck. <laughs> Tacoma, Tacoma is ratchet, boy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, I, I, I was living in, I was living in a cool area, and um, I wasn't necessarily living in Tacoma. I was living in a cool little area up in um Seattle. But man, four years back, man, when all that. Politics shit was like it's funny because your name of your show called politicking, but but when all the politics and shit start happening in America, man, all that shit just start the Trump shit and back and forth with the the MAGA hat and all the fighting and all the bullshit and and up there, you know, I'm I was living around Proud Boys and them neo Nazi motherfuckers, and I was like, this shit is worse than me up there with being like this is like is like is is like me being a a a, a, a a blood in a crip neighborhood with all red on. You feel oh. what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? So it was just always some shit that I was like getting into it with the motherfuckers. And I was just like, kind of like, man, fuck this shit. So we kind of went on a vacation and then the pandemic broke out. And it was like, you think, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you see how life is over here versus life is over there. And then it was just like, me and my wife was like, I think we could do this. You know, we, 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 we this is, you, you got you go somewhere for 90 days first. You don't ever just go somewhere and be like, I'm about to live in Puerto Rico. Or I'm about to live in Jamaica. Go to that, go to Puerto Rico or Jamaica or Dominican Republic for like 90 days and, and sit there and go, okay, the hospital that way, the schools is right here. This gonna cost this much. This gonna cost this, cost me this much a year. This gonna cost me cost me this much a year, and then try to figure it out like that. You know what I'm saying? And I figured out the ego system, I figured out oh, okay. Motherfuckers is the people is this way over here. Okay, this is where I want to know where the crazy shit is at. I want to know where the good shit is at. I want to know where the, you know what I'm saying? I, I I'm from South Central, man. In South Central LA, you gotta know, you gotta know that. Oh shit. Hey, you be like you be like where your mama stay, where your grandmama stay. <laughs> exactly. You want to know where what hood you just pulled up in. You want to know. Where or not, don't go this way, go that way. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you should drive around the long way instead of so I, I figured once I figured out all that, man. I was like, man, let's get up out of here and then and yeah, we got it um, four years out. Oh, what would you say? No, I was saying somebody had sent a question too. You see it? What 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 was it a good move? Hell yeah, it was a good move. Hell yeah, I've been. If it wasn't a good move, I'd have been back. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Since I've been here, uh, I done bought my house and I done um, uh, built upstairs of my house too. So you know what I'm saying? I, it's all How much your house cost out there? Oh, uh, not not that much. I ain't gonna discuss it on here, but you know what I'm saying? I get at you, you in my DM. No, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, we said um, out here in Oceanside, condos half a million. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I, I ain't have nowhere near no shit like that. That's crazy. That's cool, yeah. man. I, I like to see people. Um, I don't know. I think that's cool, man. Like what you're doing, and then I see you still um doing shows and, and coming out here. So I just thought that was really cool. I'm like, that's cool, man. I see, you. man. Have hip hop, fun, thank you. Hip hop, yeah. I I think hip hop and shit. You know what I'm saying? What she say? Uh, right, I gotta be there for a second. Exactly. Come ninety days. Come pull up. You can stay in my my crib. I got it's three bedrooms downstairs and it's two bedrooms and two two showers upstairs. Oh, that was Mike that said it. Look, they just said that. Well, shout out to my homeboy Jay Sticks too. I seen him on here too. Our partner yeah. house. Dope. Yeah, she said the house dope. She seen it. That's my homegirl Ina. Yeah, me. My nigga John Moore, that's my nigga Sticks. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I just be chilling, man. Oh, you know so, what I'm so yeah, we gotta catch up. We got a lot of people in here that he said I just came in late. Where he is? He uh, he in the Dominican Republic. The DR man yeah. is sitting there raining right now. This shit hot. It's hot right. Yeah, he said ain't no air, ain't no air, ain't no heat over there. So he over there. Uh, I mean, no air condition over there. So he in the heat struggling. That's why he got his man. shirt off. Yep, yeah, and that when the um. <laughs> 
when that power cut back on, boy, you gonna best believe I'm like, I'm gonna ice this motherfucker up. Definitely stay connected, family and friends. Much love. And then, um, and then another reason I want to talk to you that you uh, actually got my attention is uh, actually my wife is uh, related to EZE. So then I saw that you you said oh, you that's were a ghostwriter. Yeah, you said you was a ghostwriter for me. I, I actually saw that song and you said you you was ghostwriter when you was nineteen. So All I right. want you to talk about that. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. That shit, how that shit came about was, I grew up, I grew up in um on in a in this neighborhood on 36 in Vermont. Me and my homeboy used to rap together in junior high school. We was double vision and shit. I heard a rap contest was going on the radio on 1580K Day back in the days in the 80, it was 1980 something. Uh, uh, world class wrecking crew was having a rap contest. And the winner going to win a, uh, a record deal and all this shit with Lonzo from the Royal Cross Record Crew. Yeah, so, yeah. So my my auntie, that's my auntie now, Peaches, but she was just my um, neighbor back then before my uncle and her started messing around. Uh, uh, she she was like, I'll chaperone y'all. I'll take y'all out to the uh, skating ring. So this skating ring was in Compton. You know what I'm saying? It's a blood skating ring. Everybody know this skating ring is a blood skating ring in Compton called Skateland. So me and my homeboy, we went, we rapped. We came in fucking um we 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 uh we qualified. It was like the top four, three people qualified. We qualified, we had to come back the next week. Next week we came in second because the first the, the dude that rapped first, I mean that came in first place, he was a blood. So we was rapping in a blood skating ring. So that shit was like home cooking out all off top. It was like the blood, was like, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We, was, we like two little kids, like imitating Run DMC type shit. They like, man, get y'all ass. Not like that, but everybody still had love for us. But the but the bloods, they was just going. They they got got it off. And then um, and so then um, Sir Jinx, Sir Jinx, which was Ice Cube DJ, which is Dr. Dre's cousin. He mm. was like he was like the list man, of like you know the who's next, who's so so next, so on the. He pulled me and my homeboy to the side and was like, man, y'all need to start coming to my house, man, and start, uh, I'll start making beats for y'all because y'all rapping off of like Paul Revere instrumentals, Beastie Boys instrumental, uh, 30 Days Run DMC instrumentals and shit. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, come to my house. I'll start making beats. Long story short, went to his house, started making beats. I, I was around Dre, Ice Cube, stayed two houses down from him. You know what I'm saying? So I was always in that little mix. Dale the Funky Homo Sapien is... Is Ice Cube's cousin, so when he used to come from Oakland, he come down there. I I'll be kicking it with him, playing with him outside and shit. Remote uh, Jinx's remote control cars and shit in the, in the driveway and all that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was always around, always around. And then um um I was I was a part of I was in high school. I was with a uh, I had a rap partner named Eileen, and me and him was under the wing of Bobcat. Not Battle Cat, but DJ Bobcat. Bobcat was LL Cool J, other DJ besides Cut mm. Creator. He made Jack the Ripper, I Need Love, and all that kind of shit like that, you know. And um, and he made Mama Said Knock You Out also, you know what I'm saying, which is a whole nother story. Uh, uh, so we was under Bobcat wing, and then um, when NWA broke up, Dre took me and my homeboy. And put and we had another dude in the group named Admiral D, which was just like this. He was a Jafakin, a Jafakin motherfucker. He was like a he was he would rap like a, he was Jamaican, but the fool was a Valley boy. You know what I'm saying? Well, he was like um uh, like Snow. You remember Snow? Man, yeah, he was. Man, he was like <laughs> Snow. He, was like, he like you know how Shaggy be talking like. Shaggy would be like, yes, man. So um I, we was we was making the record and and then I thought th th come like love a love. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He was one of yeah. them kind of motherfuckers, right? His name was Admiral D and shit. And so uh at that time, uh Dre used them on Always Into Something, which was kind of like the last NWA video record or whatever, like that, always into something. And then fucking um NWA broke up. Dre took us with under his wing. He had us under his wing. Shug came into the picture, and Death Row started coming, uh, building and shit. And my manager was my manager was a crip and already had money. You know what I'm saying? So what Shug was trying to offer us in them Death Row contracts, my manager was like, "Nigga, 
we already be throwing this shit in a strip club already. We be eating it. We already eat the kind of money you trying to, you ain't even trying to give us that money. You know what uh, I'm saying? We're, we're, so so we, we was like, fuck, fuck that. We wasn't fucking with Death Row. I'm still cool with Shook to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like, but we wasn't fucking with Death Row. And so as we left, when we left, it was kind of like, damn, we going back to the street. Cause it was almost like, damn, this is, we, we right here. We under Dre wing, you know what I'm saying? We right here. We about to be death row. We about to, you know, it's about to go on from there. And then it was like, man, back kind of back, almost back to the street. And then I get a call from Bobcat. Bobcat was producing Easy E record at that time. And then Bobcat was like, Diz, you need to come over here to the roof of the studio. Easy needs some help. So I, I go over there and start, you know, he asked me to get down with him and BG Knockout and um Dreister. And he I said like, it was after NWA, right? Yeah, and I, I was like, nah, because that's when him he was about to diss Snoop, and I'm like, nah, man, I just left from Death Row over there, and I ain't got no beef with. So it was around. Too. Um, what was that song he had? It was like Dre Day around that time. Yep, right okay. around that, right at that. Real time. motherfucking G's. So real, real motherfucking real Compton City G's. You know what I'm saying? And um, and I, I was like, man, I don't want no part. I don't want no parts of this beef. I don't want to do this shit. So um, he, and then he was like, "Okay, I can respect that, but yo, you, you know, nigga, you hard, you know what I'm saying? So just push your pen." And I and I and I start writing raps for that fool. You know what I'm saying? I start writing raps for him, and then in the mix of me writing these raps for him, I fuck around and go to prison at the age 20. You know what I'm saying? And I don't get out until I was 23. But now, in the time, in the time while I was in prison. Death Row blows up. All this shit goes on. He he fucking dies about a year before I come home. Mm. He, he dies a year before I come home. None of the music that I ever wrote for him came out. None of this shit. I was just like, so I wasn't going. I, 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 when I was in jail, I was planning. I was my plan was always like, all right, I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna go to Rufus. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get out and go go right back to Rufus because after I was gonna do all this writing shit anyway, Easy was like. Man, after after all the this my album come out, everybody the roster, I get I clear the roster off the shit and all that shit. Man, I I I put you out on roof. Let's let you get your solo project off. But I went to prison before any of that shit could happen. So so now while so when I get out of jail, I'm listening to um to the beat and Julio G. They uh he playing like unreleased music by Easy E and shit. We got we got an unreleased. It was like his birthday or something one day on on the radio. And he was like, yeah, we got an unreleased song by Easy E. And boom, it was twenty four hours to live. I'm like, damn, that's the shit I wrote, man. I'll go calling everybody, motherfucker. Hey, hey, nigga, that's my you know what I'm saying? It was like here, it, it, it was a weird feeling because it's like hearing yourself on the radio. It just, it's a weird feeling anytime I listen to that song because I hear his voice, but you I know, know you wrote it. I know it's not even that I wrote it, man. I the way the way he um the way he would record that the songs that I wrote, I would I was I would I would get on the mic, I would get on the mic, say the shit like it's my song. Seven thousand four hundred twenty-three grains of sand dropped from the hourglass. It's how much time I got left on this planet. So motherfuckers gotta die. I'm an evil motherfucker ready to tear. You get you get me? I mm -hmm. bust it just like it's a regular song. They they pull it up, they pull it up, they bumping it in the studio, playing it like it's a regular song. He took a cassette tape or whatever the fuck. I, I think about that at that time, I think he took a tape home. You know what I'm saying? He took a he took a tape of it. He would learn that shit like in two or three days and call me back. Man, come back up to the studio or he come pick me up, pick me up, go back to the studio, and then they playing my they playing my verse, they playing my track in his head. He rapping it, yeah. And he rapping right along on top of it. 7,000. So now you hear my voice, but then you hear his 7,423. You hear that high pitch, easy E voice. <laughs> and, the, and he uh, dropped from the hourglass. How much time I got left on this planet? Some motherfuckers got to die. Man, he's singing it right on top of me, right? And then, and then, and then Bobcat just pulls my my vocals down. Pulls his, vocals, up. pulls his vocals up and there go the song. Bam. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's always it's always like a little it's always a little funny feeling like when I hear that song it's still like uh, like when I first hear it it's almost like I hear myself but then it's like easy but then it's and then it's even it's 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 still kind of surreal too because it's like man I'm 51 years old now you know what I'm saying I wrote that shit when I was 19 but it's still like 
I became a part of history doing that. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't mother, he, he had a lot of ghost writers, but he, man, everybody ain't right for that motherfucker. I can't, a lot of people can't just walk around and just be like, I wrote a song for EZ. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it gave me some kind of like something to hold on to, like that, like, like I did this. You feel what I'm saying? Kind of shit. Yeah, we got another um question from the viewers. The viewers in here. Appreciate y'all in here too, man. We got a lot of viewer questions though. They said, uh, I don't know about this one, but he said, do Bon honor you for the roles of writing you did for Easy E? Nah, and, and, and spell Easy Name next time with a Z. <laughs> uh, it's E A Z Y. You know what I'm saying? But no, I um um I, I, the, actually the only people from Bone that I was ever really cool with was Lazy Bone. I I, I bumped him to him uh, uh, um, uh, on a different couple of occasions and shit. I I party with him one night. And a motherfucking after hours and shit, and lost my phone and shit that night. I remember that night. Was but, you uh, you was with them when when they when like when he was when he had bone? Were you around too? Um, I I, I actually look look my my and it's funny too because it, at that time the roster on 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 ruthless was like silky fine. Uh, he had um you know what I'm saying he had a uh, diamond girl. He had big chan. He had a uh, um you know what I'm saying. He had uh he had fucking um he had rhythm D, he had he had fucking uh above the law. Look, and look, my thing was like this. When I go to the studio, the twins, the two big Samoans, his security guards, right? They'll meet me at the door. If if somebody, if my manager dropped me off, my manager and them never could even come into the studio with me. Nobody could come into the studio with me. I ain't never had no homeboys. I ain't never had no tag along, no home. Nobody would ever come into the studio with me. The only people that I was ever in the studio with around Easy E was Rhythm D and Bobcat. One time I was one time I came to the studio and above the law was there, and he was like, and Easy was telling them niggas like it, man. Y'all gotta go right now. Like, like this nigga, this nigga coming to work, little nigga coming to work, you know what I'm saying? And 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 I passed with I passed Hutch and um Go Mac and all them um that that time you know what I'm saying but Bone Thugs I never was around them like in studios the I, I was I was around Bone Thugs and them uh one time in 2000 something uh when I was with Jinx and he he went up to the studio and they was they was working on something in the studio but other words than that I never hung with him I never kicked it with him I never was like a how could you say like, like if you if you if you if you think of death row like all the motherfuckers hung together, and you think mm. of ruthless like all the motherfuckers hung together, I still have my own shit going. I just came over there. I was like a hired, I was a hired gunner. I was a hitman. You know what I'm saying? I, I was I was I was hired to come over there to, to fucking write them raps and go. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't. I would say, I, did you ever? Um, was you ever around Jerry Heller? I, I had I, I actually um I actually went with my manager and and easy uh I think it was Monty Steakhouse or more, the shit called Monty's or Morty more Monty it was a I did I have been around Jerry Heller once yeah but it wasn't like I was kicking it with him or like seeing him on a regular or nothing but I've been around that motherfucker once. Mm. Yeah. All right. Then, then you were saying so you were saying that was around your um. Sound like that stuff happened around 1920s. So kind of, I guess, take us. 1920. Like, nigga, how old no, you? No, no, 19 or 20 years old. I'm like 1920s. We be mummies right now at this point. No, moment. yeah, 19. <laughs> you was around 19, 20 years old, but I was gonna say yeah. kind of uh yeah, like so take, so take yeah, so take us to like kind of like what happened after that as far as your career. So then so then after that, so so now I, I do my prison time. I do the three years in prison. When I get out, Easy's passed away. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So um, I, I was kind of like, uh, damn, what should I, you know, I, my, my my manager and them, they still balling and on top of shit. And they, they was giving me like little projects. Like it was this lady named Stephanie Bolton. She she was an R&B singer. I think she out of New Orleans, maybe, I think, or something. 
she from some somewhere down south, but she had like a song. They was like, man, we need a, a rapper to, you know, I was getting them kind of little job. I rap on a rapper verse on the on the RB record. I did that shit. You know what I'm saying? So then I was I was just kind of just like taking it easy, kind of just mm-hmm. kick back. And my boy Raz Cast was dancing for me back in high school. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. Really? And so, yeah, so Raz at this time in 96, when I get out of prison. Raz is, is popping now. He signed a priority. His record is about to pop and shit. And then I heard on the radio one time, I heard this most of little dags hold tight. I know I seldom shoot kites, but I've been trying because I've been trying to get my pockets right. And I'm like, oh, this nigga the guy nigga shout out. You know what I'm saying? So then I come home, it was all love again. It was like, man, he was like this. Learn my shit, man. Come on the road with me. So I went on the road. It was me, his cousin Blue Da Vinci from BMF, Blue mm-hmm. Da Vinci. Is Raz Cat's cousin? They they mm. niggas is cousins, and and my other homeboy from uh BMF uh Speedy, you know what I'm saying? So me Speedy and my uh our DJ Bird, which is which, are, which was a producer, and uh what's up Heather? Farmers Cup was fun, yes it was. Uh uh, I I, I was high four fucking days after Farmers <laughs> Cup. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was just like I hey, was. Look, I still got, I still got something left. Oh yeah, yeah. You was catching, you was catching them Jays, boy. They was throwing them motherfuckers like. <laughs> boy, I was. Yeah. It was not the, not the. I know where I'm at in the story, but just that farmers cup because I seen that shit, man. Hey, I was fucked up for four days after that shit. See the difference between farmers cup and and things like Kushstock. I realized. See, farmers cup is competition. So motherfuckers is coming with they A game, they top nuggets, they yeah, bomb the strain. They coming with the strongest shit. They not coming with no, ah, oh, is this some pacifier weed here? Here, my company is this, and you know, everything no. was like, ooh, Not what the name of this company? You know what I'm saying? Everything was like, <laughs> God damn, okay, Northern, okay. oh, what the fuck is this shit? You know what I'm saying? So it was that every uh, man, hats off to yeah, the that's, I, I hope that's I the highest I ever got. Man, I hope I get to perform at that motherfucker again next year, man, because that shit was a tasty treat. And hey, you saw the dude with the big blunt? Man, what? That big ass? Man, I, man, I he, was walk, he was walking around with it, but I was like, nah, I, I can't do it. it. I couldn't even I was like, I can't do it. Nah, I, 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 I can't. I was like, you, oh. you, didn't, you didn't have to hit it. All you had to do was stand by that motherfucker. You was just like, damn. You can just go, fuck. You could just, you know what I'm saying, get high off of just smelling it. But back to the story. Is um Razcast? So Razcast said, "Come on!" And I went on tour with Razcast. I w- I was on tour with Razcast while I was on parole. Coolio, rest in peace, was Raz's manager at the time. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Coolio. That was a homie too, man. That motherfucker. So they used to uh, we'll be we'll be doing a, um, we'll be doing a show somewhere, and then I fucking fly back just to meet my parole officer. Check in with her and then fly back out to the city, uh, uh, whatever city we was doing the show at. But that shit was fun. So shout out to Razcaz, man. I'm always had love for him for doing that shit. He like, you know how motherfuckers be like, you, you see, you see some rappers when they come home and shit. Like you, we see it now because we got the internet and all that kind of shit. And they homies be looking out for them, be like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? I was, I, I really felt like. If it was if it was now, if we was like internet and back then like that, you would have seen me come home. The homies I was on with the homie, the homie put me on, you know what I'm saying? It was like they really put me on. I could all I'm gonna always say that, man. They always got love for Raz for that shit. Yeah, you named then, a lot of um uh, people. I had I had Raz Cash on the show, then also you named Lonzo earlier. I had him on the show too. Oh, that's why you had saying. a I saw you had a song with JD too. Yeah, I just interviewed him. Me and JD got a couple of songs together. We got yeah. a we got a we got a song that's out right now called Friend of Mine. That boy JD was a friend of mine till I caught him in the car trying to steal my Alpine. You know what mm. I'm saying? We got we got a song called Friend of Mine. We got a song called Clown Insurrection. That's that was the first song I, I opened up at at the Farmers Cup with, but I just didn't do his verse. But that song, uh, Clown Insurrection, is like, um. Uh, about Trump and Biden and all this fucking voting shit that's going on back and forth Republican Democrat shit, and then um we also got a song called No More Locked Doors, which is the first song that we collabed on when he got out of prison. When he got out of prison, he been gone for twenty eight years. Fucking my story with JD is one time I was in the studio with Jinx, JD fucking walked in the studio. Ice Cube was working on something. He Ice Cube was in the booth. I was in the in the little where the little 
kitchen area is by the studio. And JD came in with a wet napkin, a paper towel. And I was like, what the fuck is this? He was like, man, Bushwick Bill, motherfucker from, um, you know, uh, ghetto, boys. The ghetto, the ghetto Boys taught me how to roll, roll this shit, roll this shit called a blunt. And I was like, what? I mean, this had to, this had to be like 1989 or something, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> And then um it was like it was 89 or 90, you know what I'm saying? And then fucking um and then um uh man that motherfucker opened up the thing and he had this big ass fucking tobacco paper split down the middle of I think it was a Philly or yeah, I think was he, that backwood or you no, said, it was probably it was a, 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 he, he, gonna say, he gonna say it was a backwood, but I swear to god, I think it was a Philly Titan. Remember the Philly Titan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it was a Philly Titan because I remember him taking a razor, splitting that motherfucker down the middle, took the tobacco out, and then he laid it in that wet napkin. Like, I was like, what the fuck is the you know the wet napkin? He put it in the wet napkin, then he twisted that mother. Man, I was, that was one of the highest days I ever been because I up until that point, you know what I'm saying? It was nothing but uh uh joints. We were smoking joints, sess joints at that, you know what I'm saying? What's Some Seth of that joints? shit. Like five dollar nickel bag dirt weed, you know what oh. I'm saying? Like we were smoking that shit out of fucking paper. So when when JD taught me that shit, and then another crazy thing about JD is uh when I got arrested, when I got arrested, okay, I got arrested in 90, I got arrested in 92, 93, and I got out of jail in 96. And mm. when when I when I got when I got arrested. 92, 93, I was actually in the in the fucking um wayside with JD. So mm. I know JD, I know JD through the neighborhood, Cube and Jinx, and you know, you know, around the neighborhood. I I, I used to go to Washington with Yo Yo. I'm uh, this is how I became an honorary member of the Lynch Mob, too, is because of JD. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I seen JD. In the county jail, and he like, oh man, whoop de whoop. I like, I know he in there for the hot one, you know what I'm saying? But he was like, good spirits. He like, man, I'm gonna beat this shit. Like whoop de whoop. Like, oh, I'll be out, nigga. Like, like, nigga, you take care. I was like, man, I got three years. You know what I'm saying? I was just in there, and I was about to go to the pen. You know what I'm saying? I got the, I got the three years, and he was, he was like, like, man, I see you. Like, it was basically, I thought I was gonna, I thought he was gonna beat that case, get out, and I was gonna go do my little three. Man, I did three years, and that motherfucker was still in there for twenty some, twenty five more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's super crazy. I was like, shit. And so when he got out, I was like, let me reach out to JD, man, because I always thought he was hard as fuck from um uh, from the, the old lynch mob that gorillas in the mist. Boo! Yeah. I used, I used yeah. to be my one of my favorite songs and shit. So I was like, um, not even just knowing, you know, knowing and just knowing the motherfucker is one thing, but when you know a motherfucker and that shit still, it's it, this, this shit is really hard, man. I, and so I was, so when I got at him, I was like, hey man, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't lazy on my pen shit, man. I got some shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, all right, let, let's see what it do. And I, and then the first song I, I I thought that that I, that would sound dope together. Was no more locked doors, being that he came home, he got to explain how he came home and all that shit was hard. So no more locked doors. Y'all go look that up. It's all Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, everywhere. It's on YouTube, everything. No more locked doors. Clown insurrection and friend of mine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you was talking about um Death Row a little bit earlier. Did you run into Pac any back then? Yeah, yeah. I got Pac stories too. I ran into Pac. I did run into Pac. I ran into Pac's. I ran in the man. Look, so the night, matter of fact, the night I was writing this uh, the song for Easy, I finished right. I finished writing that day. My manager, or somebody that was with my manager, got a call and was like, "Pac over there, in um Echo Sound recording his Thug Life album. Bring mm. this, bring bring this through." So they brought me through. I met him, chopped it up with him. He, I remember that night he had on uh he had on no shirt and he had on some um. Some blue dicky overalls, and I remember because I was tripping off. I was like, "Where that motherfucker? Where's this?" Um, yeah, and I'm in the video for gangster party video. I'm the hmm. sheriff. I'm the sheriff in the gangster party video. That okay. that came. About. So, but before, so when I first met, when I first met him, he had the two little, he had the two three eighties in his in, inside. He reached inside the uh, 
the, 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 the overalls like this, and that fool pulled out two th little 380s and set them on the table. Then, then, and then another thing I noticed about Pac that night. So we he, he he would put on a beat and everybody just would be around the room and just start busting. I bust, I bust. He was like, "Oh, this nigga hard." So then the nigga was like, "Nigga, uh, uh, he was like, you nigga, you down with Easy? You down with me? You saw love?" He was like, "I'm working on my Thug Life album. It's just all my homies. You know what I'm saying? That's that uh, that's that's on my that's on my album. You can come back and get on that motherfucker. Come back next week and get on it. You know what I'm saying? Come get on the track. I'm like, all right, cool." So that was the first night I met Tupac. Remember, that that's that's a night that I was writing for Easy. I went from the studio with Easy, and I met Tupac. So then I'm like, okay, about about two about a week to two weeks after that, I I get arrested and go to jail. You know what I'm saying? So all that thug life shit was out the window. All that going back to Rufus was out the window. I had to go mm -hmm. do the time. So I went to go do the time, and and bro, when I got out in 1996. I'd only been out for maybe a week to two weeks and fucking um, my homegirl, Naila, her sister was, was one of the uh, directors for uh, how do you want it? Coming up. Okay. So that video, so she, <laughs> yeah. so she was like, yeah, I'm tripping. Cause, cause she said, cause she was like, she was like this. I know you just got out of jail, but you 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 um you want to come be an extra in, in pocket them video? I was like, hell yeah! And plus, I I ain't been around niggas since I went to jail three years ago. You know what I'm saying? My, right. I've been out of sight, out of mind. So I was like, hell yeah! So I show up to the thing. She gives me, she sends me the wardrobe, and they put me in a motherfucking sheriff outfit. I, I'm the sheriff. I'm the bailiff. I'm the sheriff in the courtroom when he's like, when he like. Uh, uh, Bob Doe, Mr. Bob Doe, your your your, your hair is too gray. Uh, some some. some uh, yeah, Mr. Bob Doe, you too you old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Party Make video, video right? Stop that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm standing yeah. up against the wall with my arms crossed in a sheriff outfit because I'm the bailiff in the courtroom. And what was funny about that shit was, I'm on parole, man. I just got out. I've been in. The, I've been in the pen for three years. And then here I am in Tupac video as the police. <laughs> so, so, so everybody was laughing and shit. It was a fun. It was one of them, it was another one of them fun days that were like when people walked up and they saw me, they'd be like this. Ah, oh, this nigga, nigga, you home, nigga. Ah, this nigga's the police. Ah, they laughing like this nigga just got out of jail and he the police. You know what I'm saying? So that was a fun ass day. And uh, man, that was the last day I seen Pac actually. Um, uh, it was a, it was a close. It was a close set. Because uh, you couldn't, I mean, just couldn't know anybody just be coming up there. I couldn't, I couldn't call somebody and be like, nigga, I'm up here shooting a nigga video with Pac, nigga. And you, you ain't coming up there and getting on the set, nigga. And plus, at the same time, we shot Gangster Party video. They were simultaneously shooting um, uh, How Do You Want It video. And that day tripped me out because I remember uh, Jodeci, uh, Jodeci was in it and Danny Boy and, uh, and, and um, Aaron Hall. And the trailers, bro, this was back when motherfuckers didn't just show up with a phone or just one camera and shoot a video. This is when it was like, no, nah, it's a trailer over there. It's a trailer over there. It's a trailer over there. It's a trailer. The food cra cra art, uh, crafts is down there. You know, craft services is over there. You know what I'm saying? It's like trailers. And man, um, they were shooting how, you, how, how, how do you want a video? And how do you want a video? They would shoot one version. Pac could have his vest on and, and bandana and shit. And, and he had a girl, yeah, the girls on the mechanical bulls riding with him. And he, he would do his part. How do you want it? You know, how do you feel coming up as a nigga? They do it. He did do his part. Then they say cut. And then the girl and then them, the same ladies go take all their clothes off and film that same scene again. But naked, asshole naked. Oh, yeah. They had an x-ray version, too. And they got a. I don't know if y'all ever ever seen it or if it, it, it got to be on the internet somewhere. Well, Heather you know, Hunter in the video, right? Ain't Heather Hunter in the video? Hunter, it was a gang of porno uh, stars there that day. You oh. know what I'm saying? And so, so when they would say cut, the 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 girls, the girls would go take off all their clothes and then they come right back into the same position that they just shot the last scene at. 
You know what I'm saying? And then they'd do a butt naked version. Man, I was like, damn, this nigga Tupac was. <laughs> man, Tupac was. Hey, man, that motherfucker was head his shit, man. And and then and because I was like, because I remember saying. Like th- this is before we had internet and all this old shit where you damn near be getting away with all kind of shit. But I was like, how the fuck this nigga think he gonna get away with this butt naked shit though? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but they had they had they had struck a deal with a uh, Playboy, the Playboy Channel, back in the days. Remember on cable had yeah, cable, I remember that. Cable had like P- Playboy Channel, and, like right. If you'd have had the right thing, that shit be all scrambled. You, yeah, you be trying to watch that shit. Try to see, <laughs> that shit scrambling, try to see a titty and shit and all that. But that shit, but he has, he had, they had some kind of deal with Playboy. So that one version was going to the Playboy channel, man. I right. Was, man, Pac was on his shit, man. He was on his shit, bro. But I've been around him. I've been around him that time. And I've been around him on that, um, when they was filming that damn hit him up video too one time. Mm. When, when he was like, Oh, oh, Piggy! I ain't gonna kill you. I ain't gonna kill you, Piggy Smalls or something. He was acting like he was all shot up, but he survived. Yeah, yeah I was there. I was there that night, man. I seen him going off on. The, I I remember him going off on the cameraman like, like motherfucker. If y'all don't start shooting this, like he man, he he hated wasting time, bro. Just that sitting around that old trying to milk it or whatever the fuck. If they was just. Like man, fuck that. Film this shit right now, motherfucker. Like, let us go. This other shit we could be doing. Like, he was like, get that shit done, man. That shit. I like the way he used to work, man. That motherfucker used to work, work, bro. But yeah, rest in peace to Pac. I've been around Tupac, yeah. Somebody asked me. They asked him about how was it working with Too Short. I got a song with Too Short actually too. And it never came out. So, so people that, that people that know that they follow me on Instagram and they done heard. Like little clips of it, I done put out on. You know what? Actually, that motherfucking song might be on SoundCloud. <laughs> mm. It might just be on SoundCloud, but it's me and Too Short. You just type in Dismos and Too Short, and um, shit, you can type it on YouTube, but you can hear a little clip of it. But man, that working with Too Short, that shit was a dope ass day too, because I was uh, it was like ninety seven, ninety about ninety seven, and um, I was signed to a uh. An independent record label called Money Bag Entertainment. You see them tat that tat on my arm. Or not, not say backhand, bro. But I got a tat on my arm this way. Say Money Bag Entertainment. You know what I'm saying? And um, Money Bag was my man Pete. You know what I'm saying? He was like from New York, but but he was he was living in the, on the West Coast out here. And he had me, my cousin Tavius, Tay Gamer. You know what I'm saying? Bird, Sybil, Kimmy, Shine, Don, my homeboy Scribs, Mississippi Black. Uh, we was all we was all uh, uh like a group, you know what I'm saying? We had demos and shit that we was shopping at that time. And too short, my producer was making music for his porno. Snoop mm. the, the Snoop the year before had the highest gross in porno. I don't know if because people thought Snoop was gonna be fucking in the porno, so they 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 went to see or just because yeah, he, he just was, hosting it. Yeah, yeah, he would he would be rapping a song in between it. And then a, 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 a show, a, a porno would come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that was like, shit, if, if, Snoop, if Snoop shit grossed that motherfucker high, what you think Too Short shit going to do? He even more for the bitches and the ladies and the poles mm-hmm. and the hoes. You feel what I'm saying? So, so uh, my producer was like uh, making the music for the, just for the porno, just the beats for the porno. Is and, he- uh, and so this particular day we was in the studio. And um, his name his name is John. <laughs> and so then um, fucking um, this particular day we was in the studio, man, and he was making beats for this motherfucker. I I I, I was working on this song, this old nasty ass song, talking crazy, oh woo woo, and I was talking so crazy and nasty that I couldn't even think of the second verse. I couldn't come up with shit. So I was like, uh, so I was like, uh. Man, I'm about to go to LA. I'll be back later on tonight. Fuck with the song, you know what I'm saying? Plus, I was I was super high. I was fucked up. I was like, fuck it, man. I need to just go chill out. Come on. Tripping, man. So, so, so when I left, he called me about shit. He called me about an hour later and was like, "Hey, man, Emma, when 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 um when you left, I, I was I was mixing your 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 that that verse down, and I kept playing the song over and over, hella loud." And too short, man, when he came up in here, he was like, man, who is this nigga, man? 
And I was like, boo, 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 what's my homie Diz? Woo, 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 woo. This most man, he got woo, woo, you already working on his shit. He was like, man, tell that nigga come back to the studio, man. He don't got a second verse. Tell that nigga I get on a second verse right now. So I was like, what? He was like, yeah, man, that nigga too short in there. That nigga, that, that nigga in there writing his verse right now, nigga. He's like, nigga, come back. I was like, oh, shit, I'll be there within like 20-something minutes. Boom, I get back. Man, I, I got I got back to the studio less than 30 minutes. I pull up. Boom, I pull up in there. He's like, too short. I'm like, oh, I'm this most. He's like, man, you hard, man. I like this fucking song, man. This shit crazy, man. This motherfucker hard, man. You know what I'm saying? He said, I already, I already spit my verse. I said, what? That nigga was done like a 25 minutes, like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so he was like, he was like, man, when a song, when a song is this dope, it ain't, it's nothing to it. It's just, it's there. It's like I could see it already. Man, I went in there, listened to the motherfucker. I'm like, damn, I got a song with too short. I'm like, geeked up. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so uh I was more pumped up for my uncle, rest in peace, Uncle Hugh. Because my Uncle Houston was like a number one Too Short fan. I didn't like Too Short back then when I was younger. Because I was I was like, I'm a rapper, rapper. I come from Run DMC and LL Cool J. And you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, yeah. it's Too Short with this old. These are the tail. I didn't think that was like, man. <laughs> I'm like, man, no, nah, man. You know, you know, I was like back. I was break dancer in the front of the house with the big ass boom radio. Like I, I wasn't trying to be no, I wasn't at the age where I was trying to mac girls and uh, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really, I was like, man, no, nah, I'm still spinning on my back and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was my uncle that used to be like, nigga, we got to We got to go somewhere. We're going to drive around for an hour bumping too short, nigga, like in the car, like, damn, nigga, you can't play nothing else. You can't, play, you, can't play, you can't play Houdini. You can't play Friends. Oh, you can't play Houdini. You can't play nothing else in this motherfucker. But too short, over and over. So I was, I was more pumped up for real about doing the song to be able to go to my uncle. Man, it was like going to my uncle with that, with that CD. And I, and before Too Short left the studio that day. I was I told him the story. I was like, bro, man, woo, 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 woo. I mean, I was at the age then where I, I like too short respect to everything he did. Now, you know what I'm saying? I just didn't understand it when I was younger. But then I was like, now I was like, dude, I was like, man. And so he wrote, I remember he wrote on a uh, CD to Uncle, to Uncle Hugh from Too Short. So my uncle, my uncle Houston lived in um Nebraska, in Omaha, Nebraska. Man, I flew out there to do something, go see my grandmother or something. <laughs> when I flew out there, man, I gave him that CD. He was like, "What the fuck, God, what, what? I was like, I was like, man, put it on. Man. My uncle hey, was crying. That shit, that shit was like, you want a Grammy to him, huh? <laughs> that was a hood Grammy right there. You finished the story for me, bro. That was like, uh, one of them. it was like a motherfucker saying, "I was like, made, this, this Grammy is for my uncle or my my whoopie whoop whoop whoop." You know what I'm saying? It was like go, it was like doing this on TV, and then you go there and give it to them, and they like, no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey man, my uncle cried, man. That nigga cried, man. That nigga cried when I gave him that CD. He was like, nigga, you got a song with Too Short, like nigga. He was like, nigga, like my uncle looked at me, nigga, like I was. Then I, I became that nigga number one. I was that nigga, like, like nah, nigga, like, like I remember that nigga telling his homeboy. Like nigga, nigga, you can't nigga my uncle, my nephew, nigga. That nigga was nigga, nigga. That only CD he playing in the car is me and Too Short over. Hey, and too over. Short hard though. Yeah, Too Short is hard as fuck. I, yeah, I, 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 I can't take nothing from him, and I say, man, shout out to him for that because it wasn't like he was hitting me over the head like you know this verse gonna cost you ten thousand dollars or some shit like you know what I'm saying. And hey, and, and he gave me the signature. Biatch at the end of the verse, I was like, Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it wasn't like he just was on that motherfucker, like too short, some, some, then you know what I'm saying? And, and nah, he, he was real got, too short. He, yeah. he was like, I ain't for I, but I hit her forehead, I'm too high, bitch. You know what I'm saying? He hit him with the, with the I was like, Oh, nigga, I got the signature, bitch. You know how much that bitch cost, nigga? Just to have that bitch on your uh, song. So I was out oh, yeah, that. So that's how that's what it felt like working with two short in the questions. You know what I'm saying? Nah, that's cool. Yeah, that that's was cold. that shit was rest in peace to Uncle Hugh, man. I know that motherfucker, man. When I gave him that, bro, you should have seen how he was playing them. He was playing that shit to 
all his everybody that came in the house, he was like, nigga, look, nigga, this got a song with two short niggas. He was bumping that motherfucker. I don't care, nigga. Grandma had to hear that shit, everything. That shit nasty as fuck. Nigga, he was playing every he, everybody ears heard that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that was love. Uh, so what yeah. you got going on right now? Right now, my album is out right now. Pen attention. Pen attention. Like mm -hmm. play off the word penitentiary. Because I was like all these thoughts that was locked up in my head. And then I was like, not only that, paying attention because I paid attention to my pen. I didn't write nothing. No, I didn't write no dumb, unnecessary shit. I didn't say, oh, I need to make a song for the bitches. Oh, I need to make a song. Just to, I, I'm going to make up a song called Weeble Wobble. Weeble your knees. Weeble Wobble. Weeble your knees. Weeble your... I didn't, you know, I, I really paid attention to the beginning, the middle, and the ending of my album. And, and, and low key, this was my first all solo project album. That's why I didn't I didn't want no uh gang of features on there. For real, rest in peace for sure, Kimmy Coop. Thank you. And then I didn't um I didn't want no features, a lot of features on there. Uh JD start the album off. It's called JD Shot Calling. Cause I felt like, you know, he 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 could uh set your mind up for what you about to hear on the record for him just kind of this. It's almost like have you ever did time? No. Okay. I was in the military. So, okay. <laughs> okay. So, like, when you do time, when you when you go to jail in California, like, it, it's crazy because your shit is called politicking. But it's politics that come with prison. You know what I'm saying? And um, when you go into prison, you know, it's, it's going to be a black representative, a white representative, and a Hispanic representative. So, uh, whatever category you fall into, you need to go over there to that group. So the, so so it would be somebody like JD doing 28 motherfucking years. He'd be on his like 26, 27th year, and he'd be coming to talk to us new fresh motherfuckers that's just coming in here, like, hey man, this is the rules. The the Mexicans gonna get the uh the TV on Monday and Tuesday. The whites is gonna get it on Thursday. We're gonna get it on Friday and Saturday, and then and then um uh, every Sunday we gonna rotate. That Mexicans gonna get it, then the blacks gonna get it, then the red. Then, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta know these, these, these. You gotta know these shits, and you got an older motherfucker like JD in there telling you, look, for you new motherfuckers that ain't never been to the prison, don't be coming in here talking about nigga this, nigga that. The N word stop at the at the door right now. You know what I'm saying? If you're a blood and 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 you don't want to address this crip motherfucker as this whoop de whoop he's kiwi to you and and then uh the bloods to the crips to the bloods he's damu to you you know what i'm saying they teach you little swahili words and just like you know if some don't be borrowing nothing from another race you know what i'm saying it ain't cool to play games with other races up in there stick with your own our shit our showers is over here so i kind of I kind of like incorporated that kind of feeling when I when I was like JD shot calling with the opening of my album and I let him do like almost like a spoken word on there. But him, that's the only uh the uh feature I got on my album besides my wife is singing on a hook and my homeboy Steph, Steph Wise, he from Romania, he's sing, he's singing on one hook. But other words than that, I got I got rapper homies, I got a whole bunch of homies, I got homies from the lynch mob. I need songs, I got I need to be completing with them and all that kind of shit. And, I got other songs with other homies, I, but I held everything back because I wanted this album to show that what kind of month, like like at, at Farmer's Cup, who, you saw me on stage with who? Yourself. Okay. So I wanted to show that I could stand alone. I ain't, I don't need no, that, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I could, I could bam, 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 song after song after song. I wanted to stand alone on my first shit, but now I'm about to start releasing all kinds of shit though. I got a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm just having fun, man. I'm just DR living, chilling out here. You know what I'm saying? Raising my two sons. Me and my son, me and my two sons, they 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 um six and five. They Dax mm -hmm. and Duke. And my homeboy J Pad, he produced this song that we got coming out pretty soon. You know, it's a playoff of Biz Marquis. Nobody beats the biz. Nobody beats uh -huh. the biz. But everybody called me Diz for short. My name Diz Smokes, but everybody Diz, Diz, Diz. The, Everybody, you and my homie, you know, you know, everybody call me Diz. Hey man, you talking Diz? Woo, woo, woo. So my sons, my little sons is hitting it. 
Nobody beats the this. Nobody beats the this. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go with that real, with one, uh, one time with my, my little sons. You know what I'm saying? But other words than that, man, I got a gang of heat, man. My shit is dope. I ain't saying that because it's me, but uh, my shit is really dope. It's thought about all my production is dope, tight. All my sh- You don't listen to my shit and go, man, this nigga faking or this nigga ain't. I, I don't be making up no shit. I, I don't exaggerate no way outrageous shit. You know what I'm saying? All these stories I'm telling you is real life shit. I've really, man, I did everything, man. I I, 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 I was Puffy's personal cook. You know what I'm saying? After Biggie died. Puffy who? Puff motherfucking in trouble, diddy ass daddy. Motherfucker. No, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure because you know about that. You know about that. That's why Puffy I had to who? make sure. Diddy, 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 do it, diddy. Diddy, do it, diddy. That motherfucker. You was his you know cook? Man, after after Biggie, after Biggie got killed, and they first time they came back to LA, I was cooking at a uh, a restaurant on Melrose called Uncle Eric's, Uncle E's, a barbecue spot. And we was like, we was like one of the only black restaurants on Melrose at that time. And we was barbecue. It was to where like when 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 motherfuckers like Raekwon, Wu Tang, and them come to LA, they come from LA, LAX to Uncle E's. Mm. Sit down and chill and have a little lunch before they go on and do whatever they about to do. You know what I'm saying? We was we was that kind of the black spot on Melrose. You got to come check in. We bumping music. You know what I'm saying? We got good food and all this shit. And so uh, I, one day, uh, this uh, this Jewish guy who uh, actually uh, he used to eat there all the fucking time. He lived in the neighborhood back behind us. Was we uh, Melrose is like in a predominantly Jewish uh, community. He, uh, man, he, uh, fucking, yep, the ghetto gourmet, she, 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 she know, uh, fucking, um, he used to come in there and eat, and he was one of the producers at the, uh, American Music Awards, and he was like, hey, man, Biddy Medina is my friend, and, um, Puffy is coming back in town, you know, since, um, Biggie, Biggie passed, and they don't want to stay in hotels, they ain't gonna do all that, so they gonna rent a mansion in Beverly Hills, and could you come cook for him for like two weeks? I was like, and, and, and so my boss was like, Diz, you know, I'm married, nigga. I got to go home every night at the end of the night. And I wasn't married at that time. Uncle Eric, she remember. <clears throat> See, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Melrose days. And then uh, fucking, um, bro, I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. So I went up to the mansion. And this, have you ever seen Money Talks with Chris Tucker and mm-hmm. um, Charlie Sheen? It was that mansion. You remember that mansion that was in there? Yeah. That, so that was the same mansion we were staying in. Wow. You know okay. what I'm saying? So that, yeah. So, hey, what do you say? He said he was, he was Harry Belafonte's son or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Damon, Damon, the Fonte or some shit. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, crazy. Rick, Rick Damon or some shit. Something yeah. Something. That's just funny. Stupid. Yeah, that shit, shit was funny as fuck. But so what happened was, um, I, I hear a little, I hear a little one. Set tripping, trying to uh, open that door. He can't get the door open, but I hear him trying to. He trying, but anyway, fucking um. So um, I, I was like, yeah. So I, I stayed up there. I cooked for the locks, Lil Kim, Puffy, and Mace. Mm. And, and um, what's up, Duke? You might as well say hi to everybody since you all on the TV. Say what's up. Hi. What up? <laughs> get up out what of here. Duke? And so then um uh. So, so I cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I, I never left the mansion. I stayed there all day. I never left. Just in case motherfucker hungry, I was on deck on, on call to be like, all right, we whatever. And so, so 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 people be asking me now, since all this shit that came up with Puffy, did I see any kind of freaky wild shit going on? Hey man, I don't know if they was mourning at that time, but wasn't nobody really in no high-spirited uppity party mode type playing around shit. Matter of fact, one thing that even stuck out to me was that uh uh big sheep big uh big uh sheep uh, loose she, yeah she he he one night we was um because I remember they left in the daytime and they filmed Arsenio Hall maybe like around three o'clock in the daytime and then so then you know they filmed it at three in the daytime but then they air it like Arsenio used to come on on like at 10 o'clock at night or yeah, yeah, night, like, yeah, yeah, like eleven or ten o'clock or something, 
And so right. I remember that night, them saying, um, hey, man, we're going to go to the Beverly Hills Hotel. It's a party at the Beverly Hills Hotel. So Puffy and Mace and all them motherfuckers left. Lil' Kim, they left. But Sheik stayed. He stayed at the kitchen. He stayed at the house with me and was like, man, I'm not, I'm not fucking around in L.A. He was like, they not about to call. My, I remember he said, he him saying, man, they not, the, they not, the, they not about to be calling my mama talking about. Oh, he was only twenty something. Whoop de whoop 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 whoop. Like he was like, like fuck that. I'm not going on these L.A. streets. And I remember telling him like, hey man, man, L.A. motherfuckers like the locks, man. They like all the, they like all y'all, man. That shit, that shit was between Biggie and Pac, man. Ain't no motherfucking East Coast war to where. A uh, New York motherfucker just gonna be walking down the street and somebody gonna be like, "Oh, he's from New York. Take off on him or get him." And shit. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "That shit ain't like that." You know what I'm saying? I was like, "Man, y'all can go anywhere and do anything." That shit was, that shit was between them two motherfuckers that got out of control. But um, one thing, one one other thing that was kind of crazy too. Uh, one day, Mace in the morning, uh, I had you know, so it was like. I was cooking breakfast like fancy little waffles, and pancakes, and <coughs> excuse me, cut up fruit and shit like that, <clears throat> and all that shit, mimosas and all that shit. And uh, one morning, one morning, uh, Mace came down. He was like, "Oh man, I remember he was in some kind of weird ass little mood and shit." And he was like, "Oh man, I'm a Harlem nigga, man. I don't, I don't need all this old fancy ass shit. He talking shit about all this shit I got." I just got all kind of food just laid out. Rich nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, what y'all niggas want today? Nigga, croissants, nigga, uh, turkey bacon. Nigga, what the fuck? You want an omelet? You want an over easy, medium, why the fuck? Whatever, nigga. I'm there on deck just to cook whatever niggas want. So uh, this nigga came down talking about, oh, man, I'm a nah, nigga. I'm from Harlem. I ain't no fancy nigga. I just want some regular cereal. I'm like, Look all right, this. nigga. I was like, nigga. But see, the thing about having me, nigga, is I'm I'm young. I'm the cook and I'm young, nigga. So I, I, I got a young mind, nigga. I got Lucky Charms. I got Captain Crunch Berries, nigga. I got Frosted Flakes, nigga. I got Raisin Bran, nigga. I got <laughs> all kind of every hood cereal a nigga think he won't, could won't. Nigga, I had it for your ghetto asses right here. Nigga, I got whatever cereal you want, nigga, from Fruit of Loops on down, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Right here for it. This nigga was like, oh, I remember he, little attitude changing. This nigga get a big ass Tupperware bowl. This is a ghetto ass nigga. We in a mansion. This nigga get a Tupperware bowl. This nigga like, oh yeah, he gets some like frosted flakes or some shit. This nigga pours his big ass bowl of frosted flakes. He goes to the refrigerator. The nigga goes, oh man, what the fuck is the? You know, it was uh, it wasn't no vitamin D milk. It was like, it was like low fat or two percent or some shit. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like the thin, thin, blue, watery shit, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, it was like low fat or something. This nigga was like, ah oh, man, where the, <laughs> where the vitamin D milk? This nigga start whining like a little baby, nigga. I was like, <laughs> so, like, like fucking Puffy and them. They already told me anything that any artist in this motherfucking house want, nigga. If if Jada Kiss would have came to me and was like. Nigga, it was two in the morning, and that nigga said, "Man, I want some. I want a case of Cristal. All I, I got like a bat phone. I have a phone, a phone that the niggas gave me. So I called this number. At the end, at the bottom of the hills in Beverly Hills was a store that just got a probably a black card bad boy shit just open for like whatever nigga want. It get delivered up to the house like no problem. You know what I'm saying?" So within 10 minutes, nigga, I was going to have the vitamin D milk up there. I'm telling this nigga, like, nigga, I'm going to get the vitamin D milk. I just get it ordered. This nigga, like, uh, he said something, and I said, and I said, what? And then the nigga said, what? And then, nigga, you know how nigga say, nigga say, what? Nigga say, what? Nigga say, what? And he'd be like, nigga, what? And he'd be like, and then them what's could, them what's could get out of control. You know what I'm <laughs> so our what's kind of was, it was getting a little, it was like, that nigga said, he says, he said, oh, the nigga said, man, I'm going to tell Puffy. You know what I'm saying? He said, he said, man, I'm going to tell Puffy. And he said it like, like, oh, this, like, 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 nigga, I'm about to get your ass fired and get up out of here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Almost right. like, like, I'm going to tell Puffy, nigga, like, you ain't got no vitamin D milk. I'm like, I like, I said, what? That nigga said, what? I said, what? That nigga said, what? I said, what? That nigga said, and then JD Kiss was like, no, no, no. 
just chill out, man. That nigga, Puff, he was like, Puff be spoiling that nigga like he is on son, Pop. Yo, just chill, man. I don't know. Don't even ignore that nigga, man. Don't don't worry about that nigga, man. Don't worry about that nigga. You all right, daddy. Just go. Go ahead, man. Just go ahead. Just just call and get the just order the shit, man. You all right. So I was like, all right, I called the fucking, you know what I'm saying? I called, got the vitamin D order and the shit. But otherwise, now nah, I didn't talk to that nigga Mace no more the whole time I was up in there cooking that nigga. I didn't like that nigga really, man. He 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 you could tell, you see how he is with, with camera on camera, that yeah. He the nigga is a he got a cocky like like you know like that nigga was like man he it's kind of like awkward was, little awkward man the nigga acted like he was the man nigga and that shit is like irritating it to a nigga like me it's like almost like nigga I don't give a fuck nigga mm. you know what I'm saying and, and 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 like it was funny too because nigga said some I heard I heard something like that nigga Mace he's supposed to got hands that nigga's supposed to got like some little you know what I'm saying. So I it, it would have been fucked up if I'd have been telling this story like Mace would have put hands on me and I'd have been telling this story like yeah that nigga Mace put hands on me one time when I was cooking for fuck this story be sounding fucked up then but I was willing to fight that nigga you know what I'm saying but but it would have been fucked it would have been fucked up if I would have jumped up thinking I could have got some of that nigga that nigga would have I'd have been like damn this nigga I got beat up by the shiny suit nigga you know what I'm saying that would have been fucked up so I'm glad we we didn't uh. Yeah, they said they call him. They call him Moon. Uh, what Moon Lisi or something? Moon Lisi or uh, some some name? They said they used to call him Moon Lisi, something like they, that. I know they used to call that nigga Murder. Yeah, Murder and Moon Lisi or something like that. I but I was gonna know. say, so what you think about all that deep stuff going on though? Shit, man. Um, uh, it ain't nothing to think about. That nigga in trouble. That nigga they don't get that nigga. That video was crazy. Yeah, they working on that nigga. That shit. Uh, all I know is I got a daughter. Nigga, that's hit all daughter. I, Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. I, I got a daughter I, now, so I was like, man, that's somebody's yeah, daughter, bro. That's you, all you, I was you, thinking about. You, you know the one, the two things that I don't understand about R. Kelly or this motherfucking puffy shit. One thing I never understood about R. Kelly was, like, damn, man, if he would have even peed in my little my little cousin's face, nigga, if that was my. My, my 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 mom's you my third cousin. <laughs> if that was my mom's cousin's cousin huh? daughter's niece, nigga, I would have beat that nigga at breaks off that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I don't understand where nobody in nobody's family is like, man, fuck the police, man. We ain't about to call the police on this nigga. We gonna go fuck him up. Wait till his you ass know, is at work. Why 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 that nigga ain't why that nigga ain't been coming out of a concert and you just see R. Kelly getting his jaw broken, his tooth knocked out or something? Like, nigga, hey, fuck his security guards, nigga. I'm going to put four niggas on his security. First, I'm going to send four dummy niggas in where the security guards is like, huh, 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 with the four dummy niggas. And while the four dummy niggas is tussling with the security guards, four more dummy niggas is coming in and knock this nigga head off until he turned into a dummy. You understand hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand. Like, man, Cassidy... She would have been my daughter's fucking cousin or something. We would have been, we would have been like, man, no man, fuck all that, man. We are gonna find Puffy, but motherfucking ass coming off a yacht, nigga, some coming out of some restaurant, nigga. If paparazzi could find Puffy, we could find him. We would have found that nigga and beat him up, man. He just been beat up for real. I ain't trying yeah. to talk about taking a nigga life, but just beat him up. Let that nigga feel that shit. I thought it was wild well, how like um it's a lot you know they showing all those on um, videos of the security guards saying <laughs> what happened, yeah. but I'm like why y'all didn't stop it when it was going on? Yeah, yeah, like y'all could at least say like yo man like I, I I I remember back in the day man I had a family member and I he, he was right in front of me and he got fighting with his girl. I stopped that shit. I ain't gonna let him just sit there and beat on. I was yeah, like yo yeah. man, just pulled him that. away. So why nobody try to do that if they see him doing that? Why everybody like? Tell the especially, stories now about what happened. Especially the Gene Deal nigga. He seemed like he was yeah. around shit. And that nigga like, especially when that, I think I heard that nigga say, yeah, man, I seen him hit his mama before. Yeah, yeah, he got a new one. He slapped his mama, yeah. yeah. He said, I, I, I seen him hit his mama before, and I told him, man, don't do, don't ever do that again. Nigga, he was supposed to slap that nigga and be like, nigga, slap your mama again, nigga. Yeah. He's so it's kind of weird. Nigga, so nigga, slap your mama again, nigga. Slap your mama again, see what happened. All them niggas, man, that shit, man, niggas be, niggas be weak for money, man. That shit just a, this show just how money be just doing. Controlling niggas, people. Controlling a motherfucker. But that's some bullshit. Fuck Puffy. I don't give a fuck about that nigga. 
And another thing is that nigga lucky. He lucky I didn't re- become super, super tight with Tupac because I could have poisoned all them niggas up in there when I was <laughs> <laughs> I, right? I could have fucked up the whole bad boy nigga. Everybody would have been Jim. I, I could have Jim Jones them the real Kool-Aid Jim Jones. Like, nigga, y'all want some nigga? I could have had them sip some Kool-Aid, nigga. They would have went to sleep and I woke up fucking with me, nigga. Mm. But I ain't I'm yeah. fine. Yeah, but so we got money, we got money, it. We about to wrap it up, but I guess we got a, we got a couple more, one more um, listener que- or oh, viewer question. How did you get the name Dismos? Oh shit, I got the name Dismos because my homie, my homie, uh, my homie Dags, Raz and Dags, they used to dance and shit. But my homie Dags used to be like, nigga, my name was always Dismo. It was D, it was D I Z M O, like the Gremlin, the Gizmo. Back in the days with like the the gremlins gizmo, I was dismo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um and then um my uh my homeboy in, in junior high school, I used to always in high school, that, that nigga, I used to always say shit like uh they used to play something and I'd be like, Man, y'all like these niggas, man. These niggas weak. Get them niggas nothing. I used to always give motherfuckers nothing. I'd be they 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 motherfuckers would be playing somebody new, they'll be they'll play some shit. They'll be like, uh, playing that shit. I'll be like, hey, y'all like this shit? This shit weak, man. Them niggas is weak. Man, niggas, my homeboys be like, God damn, y'all ain't dismal, nigga, but you be dissing the most. Nigga, you, <laughs> yeah, that, the nigga, most. that nigga said, nigga, this nigga Diz be giving nobody nothing. That nigga don't be giving nobody nothing. I, I used to, just, and then I, and then I used to always be the kind of motherfucker that, it, like, if we was somewhere and motherfuckers started off in a cypher. You know what I'm saying? We was all rapping. I'd be like, man, this nigga right here is weak as fuck. So I always kind of like got kind of dissing a little bit too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so my homeboy was like, nigga, you diss the most, nigga. And so then as I got older, I dropped that the Z from that that Dismo from that Gremlin shit from when I was younger. And my mama used to call me Dizzy when I was a little smaller. Dizzy, you know what I'm saying? So that Diz always kind of stuck with me. And then when I got older, I was just like, yeah, I start taking MC and even just more like serious. I became diss most, like nigga, I diss the most, nigga, I diss doing the most. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, that's how the name came up. Yes, and then what would you like to say to your fans and supporters? Man, keep on supporting and keep on being a fan and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, man, I got some new shit. I got some more shit. I got some old shit. Some shit you never heard before. I got shit that you that you that you might have just heard clips of it on Instagram or Facebook, but go to my shit, man. Go listen to the shit. Apple music, Spotify. Even if you don't got none of them fucking uh fucking you know a- apps where you get your music, my shit is on YouTube music. Go sh- listen to that shit, stream it, and um when and sometimes when I be raising money uh, at Cash App Dollar Sign Dismos, I'm not raising that money for my personal shit. You know what I'm saying? I be out here in the DR. I, um, when I first moved out here, I was I helped like put this little park together. I put uh, swings and trash cans in the park. Um, right now, uh, my kids' school actually is in. They um they are they in a little they uh. They are in a little. They in a little need of some more money. Uh, right, right now, we don't raise three thousand, but the goal is to raise eight thousand to keep the doors open at the school. You know what I'm saying? And it's not. It's not so much. You know, I'm American, so I could really go pay to go put my kids in some other school, which I don't want to do. I mean, I pay. I pay at this school too, but um, but this school, if this particular school closes, it's gonna be a few uh Haitian kids and Dominican kids that. They can't even go to the other schools that's around in their area, and they just be home all day in the daytime, and that's fucked up, man. So, so I'm at three thousand on the GoFundMe, but you can also cash app dollar sign Desmos, and whatever donations I always record the people who sent their donations. I show where the money go. Um, you can go on YouTube and type in Desmos the Park, and you can see uh you can see how I did that step by step every time the money came in. I show me take the money off a of cash app, turn it into pesos, go buy swings, go buy trash cans, get tables made, get the chairs built, get the landscaping cut on that shit. You know what I'm saying? So 
Um, man, that's all I got to say to my people, man. And follow me and fuck with me. Keep on fucking with me and following me, man. Don't do no wrong to nobody, man. Treat everybody how you want to treat them. You to be treated, man. Love everybody. I don't care what race, religion, and all this shit. And um, uh, man, y'all, y'all buckle down for that motherfucking um that presidential shit that's about to come up. You know what I'm saying? Good luck to y'all in America. <laughs> and when y'all ready to run and flee, I hope you got your motherfucking passport to come see me. You feel what I'm saying? Just come, you know, when shit go up, if it go up, you know what I'm saying? Or it might just be just some regular, just another regular day. Motherfucker, motherfuckers. Some bullshit ruling, and it, it is what it is. But, man, I love everybody. One love. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for having me on your show, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're no problem. I want to say thanks for coming through politics with me. For sure. Yeah, I want to say uh, you got any shout-outs? Shit, shout-out to everybody, man. Now, everybody, shout-out to Ina. Shout-out to Barack. Shout-out to... Uh, yeah, everybody in the chat. GG's chat. I seen Sticks on here. I seen everybody that was in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Shout out, to, shout out the whole lynch mob, you know what I'm saying? Cool. Dazzy D, Chili Chill, you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, fucking uh, yeah, Lansky, JD, motherfucking Chap Cheese, motherfucking everybody. Rest in peace, Shoddy, you know what I'm saying? Shit, uh, fuck, man, shout out to everybody, man. All my homies, they know who I am, man. I got love for everybody, everybody got love for me, man. Never take a and never take a side. That's a piece of information I give to everybody. Never take a side. When you, you see two motherfuckers beefing, don't just be like, I'm about to be on that. I'm about to leave, man. Don't never take a side. I never take sides, man. Never And my me ne never taking a side, man, I'm still cool with these motherfuckers. I'm still cool with these motherfuckers to this day. To where there's some motherfuckers that can't even stand to be in the same room as each other. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm going anywhere and everywhere, man. So never take a side, man, and just... Shit, just chill out, man. Love life, man. You know what I mean?